Hello and welcome to another edition of the PHNX d podcast right here at PHNX. My name is Derek Montia. Of course, I am your mayor of PHNX. I'm joined by my vice mayor, the one and only Thunderstick Jesse Friedman. Derek, it's a great day on the PHNX Diamondbacks podcast. We've got Zach Granke back in town. It's Mailbag Monday. Joe right. Mansupply is joining the show today. It's so going to be a fun one. So many things, Jesse. I'm so excited myself. But of course, this show is brought to you by the fine folks at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now if you haven't had a chance to do so. New customers can get down on the third round of NBA playoff action just simply by betting on a team to win. You bet $5 on any NBA team to win. And my suggestion would be bet against the Dallas Mavericks because screw the Mavericks. Uh, and you will get $150 in free bets if they win. So any uh, new customers out there, go get down on the action over at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Jesse, yes, like you mentioned, full show today. We're joined by Joe Mantiply shortly. But of course, uh, we are here talking about the Arizona Diamondbacks continuing to roll. They have a series coming up against the Kansas City Royals, something that they don't do too often. Uh, it's a two-game set. Makes it a little little awkward, weird kind of two-game set here in the middle of some four-game sets and some three-game sets and whatever. The scheduling's weird. The Diamondback schedule is, is a nightmare, by the way. So, again, this is why we talk about series like this against teams like the Kansas City Royals that you really have to uh, kind of jump all over teams like this. You really do. You really do. I mean, the Kansas City Royals are not a great baseball team, Derek. I mean, I think that's pretty well documented at this point. Um, they're around 10 games under 500 right now. Um, and there's a reason for that. I mean, they're they don't have a whole lot going for them. The offense is is pretty rough. Uh, Zach Granke is is um, about the only thing that's going right for them on the pitching side of things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is a, a good opportunity for the Diamondbacks to keep pressing forward and continue to build momentum after that series win in Chicago. Patrick Lyons from the DNVR podcast called him Donald in a tweet. And I don't know where he gets off calling uh, Zachary Granky Donald, but we of course have him listed in our probables as uh, correctly as, as Zachary, Zachary Granky uh, going up against Zach Davies. <laughs> a lot of Zach's in here. Uh, I think maybe, maybe John Paul Heasley needs to consider changing one of his names to Zach. I don't know. That would really round things out here. But uh, it would it would have been nice, I think, to see Zach Gallen match up with Zach Granke a little bit. Yeah, just to see, sure. You know, kind of our past ace versus our future ace or our current ace. But uh, this is how the series breaks down. And I think the Arizona Diamondbacks have an excellent chance to win against even Zachary Granke here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, taking a look back at Zach Granke, he was – a big acquisition for this team. And and uh, again, the Diamondbacks were kind of in a position when they went after Zach Granke that, that they are just a little bit now where they were surprisingly good, better than expected. And the team went out and acquired surprisingly one of the biggest free agent pitchers on the market at the time. Uh, but yeah. again, uh, I think the Diamondbacks definitely have an advantage here in this series uh, in game two against with Zach Gallon on the mound as well. But let's take a take a, a look back there. It's kind of interesting to look at the trade deadline deal that was done for Zach Granke because the Arizona Diamondbacks got back in return uh, not only Corbin Martin, not only relief pitcher J.B. Bukowskis, but Josh Rojas and Seth Beer. And it really, when you look at the amount of guys that they have and the impact that these guys have had on this team this year it's, it's a pretty a pretty impressive haul that the diamondbacks got back i mean this year like you know you haven't necessarily gotten a whole lot from those guys in particular seth beer obviously fell off a little bit after he was very good you. at the How beginning of this season not remember us chanting beer on the show oh it happened it week? happened and it, it was it was the best day of the PHNX Diamondback show so far. I think there's no, there's <laughs> no question right. about that. Right. I don't want to yeah. take anything away to some of those big moments early on, but you know, Seth Beer was sent down for a reason. He, you know, he needs a little bit more time there to to iron some things out with his swing. Uh, Corbin Martin, I think, is probably the guy you could argue has been the best out of that group uh, for the Diamondbacks so far this season. Uh, Josh Rojas has just played in so few games, even though he 
granted had a three homer game mixed in there. Um, right. so Come you, on. you've really only, you've really only gotten a little snippet of each of those guys this season, but I think it's, it's more about, you know, what could the diamondbacks get from that group? You know, the rest of the year, next season, the year after, you know, the great thing about acquiring a hall of prospects like that is that their impact is going to last for years and years and years after the so move much. is made. Yeah. So, right. yeah, I don't know if they've necessarily gotten a whole lot this year, but there's certainly potential for them to do well moving forward in the future. Here's what I'll say about that trade is I'm not ready. Thank you, Chris. Chris Melton in the comments is yeah, no sorry, slander. I, I didn't intend it as, I didn't intend it as slander. It's, yeah. it's a matter Take of the guy has only played about four or five games. So that's, that's more what I'm referring to there. Here's what I will say, though. Have you ever, do you remember a trade in Diamondbacks history? Now, mind you, you're right. I'll, I will do what Brent Strom always tells me to do, which is pump my brakes, right? Uh, but the, the, the trade has seen all four guys make it up to the major league level. And in some cases, these guys have been pretty valuable. In the case of Josh Rojas, outside of the injuries that he's experienced, he's stayed on the major league roster. J.B. Bukowskis has become somewhat of a valuable piece in the bullpen right now for this team as well uh, with Corbin Martin still making it to a major league level and showing that he has that value and Seth beer doing the same. So I think at least right now for this trade, it feels like this is one of the better trades in D backs history. I'm not, I'm not ready to crown it as the best because we're still, mm. I, I feel like we're still in the potential phase, right? We're still in seeing what these yeah. guys can do in the future. Like you said, they're still very early on into their career but they can have a big impact long term but I, I do feel like the the haul that they got back for Zach Granke in this trade uh and and Zach Granke's performance with the Astros afterwards it's not to take anything away from him but by far he wasn't the most dominant pitcher in baseball where you kind of regretted letting him go after that after that point so it feels sure. like this is at least one of the better trades in in Diamondbacks history uh, with results still pending it's not a bad trade yeah it's absolutely not a bad trade uh, i mean the diamondbacks freed up quite a bit of money in the deal that was certainly a big part of things as well um and so you combine that with you know getting josh rojas who had a really good season last year we at least can can say that even though he's been limited by injuries this year and corbin martin as you said earlier you know we've only gotten a, we've only gotten a glimpse uh, so far this season, but Corbin Martin really could be. I mean, Brent Strom still speaks highly of the guy. Strom worked with him back in Houston in 2017, 2018, whatever the year was that they were together there. Um, and and Corbin Martin has an opportunity to really be a a guy at the top of a rotation coming up soon. So there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about it going forward. Brute Squad Barbecue in our chat says uh, JD Marti Martinez trade still number one trade. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, I mean, that's, that at least still. under the under the Mike Hazen regime, there there's yeah. just no debating that one. It's right. super super clear. I feel like the only other trade that I could debate is obviously the Kurt Schilling trade, because the Kurt Schilling trade changed the 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 future of this franchise, at least for the short term, and it's the reason why they won a World Series. As much as I hate to give Kurt Schilling credit for anything. <laughs> he is a big reason why they won the World Series. But all right, of course, uh, Jesse and I have uh, are very excited to welcome a special guest uh, today. We are going to ex uh, welcome now Joe Mantiply to the show. Uh, and I had some questions for him uh, earlier today. Thank you again, man, so much for joining me. Congratulations on on uh, the the success you've had in this young season so far. Uh, we've, uh, we see you're a, uh, part-time baseball player, part-time rancher. So <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you might be able to tell me a little bit more about your affiliation with, uh, Ginger Hills, Ginger Hill Angus. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we raise, uh, purebred seed stock, black Angus, um, uh, production animals. Um, my wife's family, they've been doing it for my father-in-law is a third generation, um, on the ranch. So. Uh, yeah, they uh, they've been raising cattle for years since the I want to say like the 60s. Wow. Um, yeah. And that's just kind of his uh, it's definitely his uh, his hobby. He loves it. Um, and it's I've learned a lot about it. And it's nice to uh, be able to help him out and um, 
you know, kind of get you out of the house, get you doing stuff. And, um, yeah, it's fun. Uh, have you been, how long have you been doing that for? Uh, I didn't get in, I started doing it when, you know, we first met. So, uh, we started dating back in 2013. So, okay. um, yeah, I've been just kind of helping out since then. So is there, is there anything you've learned as a rancher that's kind of transferred over to the mound at all? Uh, patience for yeah. sure. Um, <laughs> uh, especially you're, you know, when, when we're working and, um, you're dealing with, you know, animals, they can be very stubborn and, um, you know, they obviously, it's not like they understand what you're saying. So you have to be very patient. Um, and yeah, it can be frustrating at times, just like baseball, but, um, it's nice to, at the end of the day, like you get, you know, what we're doing for that day done. And it's very, um, very good feeling of accomplishment and, um, uh, very enjoyable. So, and those, and those Angus, those bulls that you guys are dealing with are incredibly huge. So yes, I can understand how, yeah. uh, sometimes they might not cooperate and there's not much you could do, uh, when, when they don't cooperate for sure. Um, all right. So speaking a little bit of stuff you've learned and learning, um, you've had a chance to work with Brent Strom, uh, this season and, Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about, uh, you know, the impact he's had on this game and on, on this team. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on what it's been like working with him and and kind of learning from someone with his his experience. Yeah, strami has been awesome. Um, you know, he's he's been around the game a long time, so he's got a lot of uh, he just has a lot of knowledge about kind of what can help guys out where it comes to, uh, you know, maybe little cues here and there that mechanically can help you out or. Um, when it comes to pitch selection and um, just how to attack hitters. Um, so he's very uh, he's a very good mix of kind of the old school um, pitching style, whether it be, you know, mechanically and, you know, making adjustments um, kind of on the fly. And um, he's also well adverse in the in the new analytics and how to apply that um, to, you know, each individual, you know, pitcher. So. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's got a very um, it's he's got a very good sense of being able to work with different guys, which can be kind of a struggle. Um, I know with myself, like giving lessons or something to to kids and stuff, and it's really hard to um, it's very difficult to to look at a certain kid and and try to figure out kind of what you could do to help that individual right. kid. Right. Right. Like tailor um, the approach to them versus doing exactly. like a universal Rather than just a broad, them. just yeah. one way. Um, so yeah, he's he's very good in that sense, um, and he's been very enjoyable. And I really, um, really enjoyed, you know, so far working with him. So, well, something I've observed is his mount. I, I guess I guess I just want to know what it, what is a mound visit from Brent Strom like because yeah. he just seems to come out and be able to get guys back on track when, when they might be, you know, kind of not finding the zone or just struggling a bit. Yeah. I think, uh, every, every visit's different. Um, every guy, um, he's always got something, you know, it's not, you know, what he says, like is never really, um, it's always very genuine. Um, and every time it's like, you know, it's something different. It's not just going over the scouting report of the next hitter or, sure. um, yeah, he can kind of sense when kind of the, maybe the game can be speeding up and, um, he's very good at just calming you down and, um, you know, bringing you back down to earth when, when everything's kind of going, turning into chaos. So, um, yeah, every visit's different. Um, sometimes he said, he'll say something funny and witty and, um, sometimes, you know, it's very, you know, serious. So, um, he's very good at at kind of reading the situation and what right. um, what he should say. So he seems he seems like he has the respect of of everybody too. And I know that's not always easy when you're like a new coach to a team like this that has a lot of the same guys on it that have been there before. So I think uh, that's probably something too that that helps out with guys like yeah. you know Madison Bumgardner and things like that that for sure. might be a little bit hard to win over. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, he's been around the game so long and he's worked with so many different, um, you know, different levels of players. And um, he's got the, you know, great stories about, you know, Sandy Koufax and stuff, you know, all the way back to then to, 
you know, working with the Justin Verlanders and the Madison Bumgarners. Um, so he's kind of seen it all. So, um, yeah, his credibility is definitely there and definitely helps with that for sure. Well, and I know what he would say about this interview right now. He would be saying it has nothing to do with him and everything to do with you. So uh, I do want to ask you about some of your success this season because you've been very good against uh, both righties and lefties uh, this season with, without giving too much away. Has there been anything that, that you can pinpoint that's kind of led to the success against you know both hitters, especially with the, the three-hitter rule now and, and being a reliever in baseball? Yeah, I mean, I think uh... – I've really kind of honed in the last few years, uh, like both my off-speed pitches, so change-up and slider. Um, and my change-up works really well to righties, and my yeah. slider works really well to lefties. So I'm able to kind of attack, um, you know, both those types of hitters um, differently. Um, and then just try to – I try to change speeds as much as I can, just keep guys off balance. Um, and, you know, also, like – just try to attack. And then when, when you get ahead, just stay ahead. Don't, don't give in and um, try not to give any pitch away. So uh, fortunately it's been, you know, everything's been going good and um, just like to keep that way as long as I can. For sure. And yeah, that was actually uh, something we were going to ask about as well, because we've noticed that you've been throwing more changeups this season. And that would explain it considering you're saying that, that it tends to work well against righties. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of times, too, when I'm coming out of the pen, certain situations, like I'm coming in to face a lefty, um, and teams will pinch hit, you know, obviously they're right-handed hitters sure. if it's late in the exactly. game. And, um, so really just honing in the command and, and execution of of my changeup. And, um, you know, it's able to – even when I'm coming in to face a lefty, I've got a plan to face that guy. Um, I usually – we usually have a good idea that the, it depending on the situation, if they're going to pitch in. So um, I like to come in with a plan of, you know, how I'm going to face a righty um, as well. So it doesn't, uh, you know, it seems to not, not take any, anything away from, you know, my mentality when I'm coming in the game. That makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, something else I wanted to ask you, since you have a bit more experience with it than other pitchers in major league baseball uh has been the talk about the baseballs uh the usage of humidors affecting them and just the balls being different and and seams being raised things like that uh have, have you noticed anything different at all like because the diamondbacks had a humidor before other teams did yeah. and you know it was is something that you kind of have had uh, for the majority i feel like of your time here yeah for sure um you know it's it's weird some some days Usually, I think it affects the starters more because they're going out inning after inning. Okay. Um, it seems to be that um, they seem to be changing inning to inning. Um, mm. So you, it might feel like a different ball in the fifth than it was in the first. Okay. Um, so for me, I haven't really seen a difference in like when I've come in um, like ball to ball. Um, usually, they're all pretty similar. Um, now, day to day, some days they feel a little different, um, whether it be like more some sometimes they feel a little more dusty, like the like maybe they were like the way they were rubbed up, they were rubbed up longer. Um, okay. Some of them feel more fresh, like they were, you know, maybe, I don't know, rubbed up like more like sooner, um, closer to the game time. I'm, I'm not sure what makes them feel that way. Um but I try not to let that kind of affect me. Um, okay. Regardless of how the ball feels, I still got to execute a pitch. Um, so that's usually my thought process. I just, you know, I try not to worry too much about, um, you know, what the ball feels like at the time. Um, if it, if I feel myself kind of like get away from that, like, man, I have to kind of click it back on real quick and just, you know, go with it. Right, not worry about the condition of the ball. I just wonder, was it were, were, was there a time in your playing career where you felt baseballs were more consistent across your you know season, for instance? Yeah, um, I mean, I I feel like for me, I haven't really noticed that big of a difference. Okay, um, you can definitely tell, like when you go somewhere where there's like more humidity, um, okay. like we were in Miami. Um, the balls felt, I thought they felt better. I prefer to pitch in humidity. Okay. Um, the well, Virginia, the so are, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I grew up that way. The ball just feels better in my hand in kind of a humid climate. Got it. Um, 
yeah, sometimes like, you know, especially in Arizona, it's, it can be really dry, Colorado. Right. Um, so the ball can kind of feel like a, almost like a pool cue sometimes. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, I prefer the humidity. Um, that's where I feel the, di- the biggest difference you can tell um, with the balls is just kind of the different climates you're in. So uh, one other thing just about the season I wanted to ask you was, uh, you know, you, you were here last season and uh, you've been around Tory. Uh, have you noticed a difference in Tory's approach uh, with with the new coaching staff, or is Tory still kind of the same old Tory? Yeah, I mean, I think he's the same guy. I think he's trying to, uh, you know, his message last year was very similar to what it is this year, and um, the way he carries himself. Um, I think, you know, I think Tory has a lot of confidence in in the guys that we have. Um, I even think last year when we were struggling, he still had confidence in the players that we had. Yeah. Um, Last year, you know, we had a ton of injuries and there was just a lot of stuff going on that kind of you we couldn't it was out of our control. Um, so this year, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like the spirits are better because we're obviously playing better. Sure. Um, so, you know, but I think, you know, I think he's the same guy and kind of just trying to approach it the same way. Well, we love Tori. So uh, that's yeah. one thing around here that we've we've always been big fans of his and uh uh, he's just a phenomenal person to be around. So, and, and I know that's the big thing is Tori just uh, is a very sincere person that cares about everybody that's he comes cool. in contact with. So, no uh, you know, of, of course, I know at times that might be a little hard when you're having to make some of the tough decisions, you know, th- that you do during the season. But um, definitely very happy for your guys' success this season and, and for your success for sure. Uh, before I let you go, one of our Twitter followers wanted to start calling you just simply the Mantiply. Okay. And I wanted to know, because uh, we're big nickname guys around here, yeah. if you had any nicknames growing up or or if you currently have a nickname. I think Luke Weaver called you Big Old Joe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's always – a funny nickname has always been uh, – people always call me Multiply. Um, that's always been – that's kind of how, it. like, my family uh, – when people have trouble, the, the pronunciations are pretty funny that you can get sometimes. So when it comes to explaining how to, you know, say our name, um, we would always say it's like multiply, but with, an, you know, obviously, because um, we'll get uh mantiply is a good one. Uh, oh, mantiply. okay. Yeah. People, people trying to fancy extra, it up. Extra syllables in there. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> for sure. I get that with Montia. So I'm, I'm with yeah. you hundred percent on that for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, multiply. My dad always called me Joe bird. That's, that's my dad's nickname. Joe bird. Um, for me. Yeah. So my dad and, um, pretty everybody back home, like kind of calls me, you know, all my dad's friends and stuff. Everybody calls me Joe bird. Nice. Um, not sure where he came up with that one, but, um, yeah, that's ever since I was a kid, that's just kind of been the, I could always hear him in the, in the stands. And he's a, he's a big, uh, kind of bigger guy with a deep, deep, loud carrying voice. So, um, yeah, that was, that was always the go-to nickname. As, as, as a parent now, I completely understand the the nickname that you just made up some time on the spot sticking for uh, uh, someone's for entire sure. life. So for that's sure. incredible. All right, before I let you go, I got five rapid questions for you, okay. uh, and then we'll get you out of here. Uh, first question, is a hot dog a sandwich? No. No. Good answer. What are you watching, parade or fireworks? Fireworks. Fireworks. Uh, in degrees... What temperature is high heat to you? I'd say 95. All right. Mm-hmm. Croc shoes, yes or no? Yes. Yes. More <laughs> All-American, baseball, or apple pie? More All-American? Yes. Oh, which one's more All-American, baseball yes. or apple pie? Yes, sir. Ooh. I know this is... I'm going to have to go with... I'm gonna have to go with apple pie. I think. Oh, baseball gets played. Oh. Baseball gets played all over the world. I don't know about apple pie. There you go. That's a nice. Yeah. That's a, and that's a good reasoning behind it. I like yeah. it too. All right, you threw me a curveball there, which you've been very effective <laughs> with as well this season. So thank you for that. And Joe, we appreciate you so much for joining the show, man. Uh, congrats again on the success of both you and the team this season, and we look forward to to watching it continue. For sure. Thanks for having me, and uh, I hope you have a good one. Yeah, man. You too. Appreciate Joe Mantiply, fantastic answers. 
by the way. <laughs> the apple pie answer blew my mind, Jesse. Because I did so not right. expect that. <laughs> I was so not expecting it because his reasoning was so solid. He's absolutely right. Baseball is beloved around the world. It's not just a, an American sport. So I, I don't know. I think apple pie might have been the answer there. But uh, shout out to Joe Mantiply. Big thank you to him for joining the show. And of course, uh, we thank you guys for being here. We know that you you have a choice on, on your local sports to watch. But of course, you're here with us. And we want you guys to sign up at gophnx.com if you haven't done so already for a membership with us. That way you don't miss any of the wonderful writing. Jesse's actually going to have a piece on Joe Mantiply coming out uh, very, very soon. Actually, this evening or tomorrow morning, whenever it gets posted but uh check out gophnx.com if you're not a member already sign up for a membership uh if you get your annual membership you get a free t-shirt like this one behind me uh over at phnxlocker.com uh, if you're not interested in that you can get a month-to-month -month membership and you'll get your first month for just 50 cents regardless you will get access to some wonderful writing from not only jesse and myself but from all the other uh wonderful uh beats here at phnx uh, as well as members only access to our discord and members only discount over at rphnxlocker.com. So make sure to sign up for that. But of course, we thank Joe for being here. We thank him for answering our questions. And of course, today would not be Monday if we didn't answer your questions. So it's time once again for another edition of the D-Backs Mailbag Monday. My mailbox, always something interesting in my mailbox. I try to get to everything in my mailbox. And then once in a while, there's a letter that makes me go, wow, wow, my mailbox. Welcome back. And of course, we got not only Mailbag Monday questions from Twitter, but in our chat as well. So first from Twitter, our first Mailbag Monday comes from our friend Sean McNally, who always... Big shout out to Sean, by the way, for always dropping us questions without even asking for them. Uh, we love it's you for incredible. it. We appreciate that you think about Mailbag Monday before we even do. But uh, Sean asks, any word on the return of the other two catchers? Do you think the bump up in starter ERA could be a result of Varsho behind the dish? Alec Thomas here for good return to AAA after catchers come back. So there's a whole lot of questions in there uh, to respond to. So let's start first with... Any word on the return of the other two catchers? Uh, at this point, I think uh, there is still some time there, unfortunately. Uh, I haven't heard any updates, but they tend to say, like, Carson Kelly is back on track and everything like that as far as his return, but still no confirmed return date. Yeah, we haven't really heard any updates uh, regarding either of those two guys. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's something that comes soon. The Diamondbacks are admittedly a little bit shorthanded right now. Um, you know, Dalton Varsho is, has, has caught quite a few games. And then of course um, they also brought up Grayson Greener as well to help kind of fill that role a little bit. So um, yeah, they're, they're lacking depth a little bit at the catching position right now. I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty clear. It's something we didn't really expect because we thought with Dalton Varsho here and the two catchers that they actually were, pretty well covered as far as catching goes. And it go just goes to show how quickly injuries can decimate any position, even one you're well stacked at, like catcher for the Diamondbacks, yeah. or at least uh, on paper they were, right? Like you might not say that Carson Kelly wasn't having a great year, but Carson Kelly's still a very effective catcher. Uh, same thing with Jose Herrera. He wasn't having a great year at the plate, but has had quite a bit of praise from his pitchers that seem to enjoy – not only working with him, but the way that he calls a game because he calls a game very effectively for them uh, on the mound. So for sure, definitely uh, some some injuries there at catcher. Uh, going back to that question, uh, he also asks, do you think the bump up in starter ERA could be a result of Varsho beyond the dish? Um, it could be a lack of Carson Kelly and Jose Herrera. I don't think it's necessarily Varsho behind the dish. Uh, like you yeah. said, Grenier could be a little bit of it. Um, working with a new catcher that you're not used to is is going to be something new, right? It's kind of like the way we um, implored people to wait a little while before blaming the coaches for the performance of the team. Uh, as much as you want to blame, you know, Joe Mather for the team not hitting well, he hasn't had very much time with the team, right? So in this case, the catchers haven't had very much time with the with this pitching staff and yeah, it definitely could be. I don't know if it's as much to blame as much as just kind of 
there being more information available on the pitching staff to hitters and, and being able to kind of understand and, and figure them out a little bit quicker than they were earlier in the season is, is more of maybe a, a factor here. Dalton Varsho is a, a good catcher. I mean, as far as we've been able to tell, he's really excelled at um, gunning guys down, trying to steal bases. That's certainly been something of note the last few weeks. Um, but yeah, I mean, he doesn't have as much experience working with the pitching staff, especially this season. So I think it's possible that they're, you know, maybe the pitchers are, are more comfortable with the other guys just because they've had more experience working with the other guys. But, um, but yeah, I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that the Dalton is, is, you know, not doing well or anything from a catching standpoint, by all accounts, he seems to be doing great back there. So I think more than anything, I mean, the starting pitching, Derek, um, w- was sort of due for for some regression, and and we've seen that happen. I, I don't necessarily think that, uh, you know, it's because anyone's not doing their job or anything. This was sort of a correction that that we kind of expected. Um, and I'm not going to even entertain any questions today about Alec Thomas being sent down. That's not we're not we're not doing that. <laughs> Alec Thomas isn't going anywhere. There are far more play. There are far more candidates to be sent down than Alec Thomas, and Alec Thomas definitely is not one of them. Uh, Brute Squad asked, with the crop of outfielders working their way up, Varsho a fourth outfielder or catcher at this point? Catcher. I mean, it seems right now like he's more valuable there, but he also has a tremendous amount of value to be able to go out into the outfield and relieve any number of the guys like a- any of the outfielders could be relieved at this point by Varsho. So his versatility yeah. is, is something that's going to keep him here no matter what, not to mention even on a day off, he has that versatility to be able to plug into the game and work any of those positions and, and stay in the game. If he can somehow add pinch hitting wise or something to the game. I think Dalton Varsho, the, the concern with him as a catcher is just that there's more wear and tear. Uh, catchers generally don't play, you know, six days a week like a lot of other everyday position players would. And so, you know, having him in there at catcher every day is probably a move that I, I don't think the Diamondbacks want him there, frankly, just because of the offensive value that he's brought this season. I mean, Dalton Varsho is probably the best hitter the Diamondbacks have. I mean, at least this season, he has been that guy. I don't I don't think there's really any debating that. He's been their most consistent offensive player. And so you want that guy in there as much as you possibly can. And, you know, if you start having him catch, then, you know, you might miss out on that. And not to say that um, also to also to say that Dalton Varsho is an incredible center fielder. And when a guy is able to provide that kind of value defensively, you know, you you can stomach moving off the catch spot if if he's going to do what he does in center field uh someone asked if varsho has all the tools again a question i'm not going to address because of course you know (laughs) dalton varsho has all the tools he has every single one of them all of them his garage is filled with tools uh (laughs) go on to the next question and uh this one comes from our pal on twitter by the way this one comes from josh hunt and josh hunt asked on twitter uh a little question about what is your dream car and why and I love this question mm. because every question we get is about baseball. So thank you, Josh, for thinking more about us than, you know, just baseball. We're well-rounded people. Jesse, do you have a dream car? Do I have a dream car? I So I'm a, I'm a pretty practical person. So I'm one of those Honda Toyota people where yeah. that's like every car I own. And I will probably never purchase anything different from that. But um I think I'm I'm one of those snobs who think Teslas are pretty cool. I don't know if I'm gonna <laughs> if I'm gonna take heat for that, but um, I mean the dashboard is literally like a like a 17 inch iPad. I mean it's yeah, it's incredible. It's it's, like the, it's stupid how big, uh, the i the the dashboard thing is on that. It's incredible. The amount of technology that they that they fit into those machines is is truly incredible. So at you some point, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't mind owning a Tesla, but um. But I don't know, Derek. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that after your transmission ordeal, you're probably not buying a another Nissan Rogue. Is that what it was? Oh, that I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not buying another Nissan Rogue. You're absolutely right about that, um, Jesse. I as as crazy as it sounds for me of all people, I've always wanted like a luxury RV, like 
even one of those okay. cooler retro looking ones like an airstream or something like that just because <laughs> the idea of being able to go anywhere and 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 you know have a place to stay where you're at ha- as i've gotten older has somehow become more appealing this was like my father's dream and i never in a million years wanted it for myself yet here i am remembering that i wanted to you know now now i want to travel and just stay in an RV, even with what I told you about going up to show though yesterday. But if I'm being completely honest, uh, my dream car is a Bugatti, uh, Chiron, which is an amazing, okay. uh, incredible car. And I don't, sure. I don't know if, if I, if I got that car, I think I, I'm required to have some sort of midlife crisis or something. I don't know. Uh, but mm-hmm. let's take a look at some of the questions that we got from the chat, by the way, Josh, Thank you for being considerate. Uh, Chris Melton asks, are people still expecting Alec Thomas to regress at the plate? I don't know. Are they? Are they crazy? I, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not really aware of, of that narrative necessarily. Um, that's definitely something that we haven't really talked about here. Um, but there, I but mean, there's uh, a holding your breath factor a little bit there, right? I mean, it's funny because on yeah. one hand, when a um, youngster comes up and has a slow start, you kind of say, okay, when are you going to get it going? But when they come up and have a, a quick start, you hope that they don't pull. And I hate I I hate myself even for pulling this comparison. But you hope that what happened to Seth Beer doesn't happen to someone like Alec Thomas, where they had a very he had a very quick start. He had a very impactful start, and then we saw yeah. him drift off and not have success. And in in my opinion, I think that's the reason why the Diamondbacks are still being a little careful with Alec Thomas. And I think it might even play into why he's hitting lower down on the lineup uh still at this point. right right it's it's fair it's fair i mean it's still a small sample size at this point so i wouldn't say he's necessarily proven anything but uh from a from a stat standpoint there's not really a reason to think that it's utterly unsustainable i mean it's not like he has this super high strikeout rate and it's not like right. every single ball he puts in play is falling in for hits it's i mean so far it's legit i mean he's hitting the ball hard um, and, and so I, I don't really see anything fluky about what he's done so far. Can he maintain that, you know, over the course of 50 or a hundred games, the rest of the way, that's a, you know, that's a, a, a whole other question. So we'll have to see how he's able to, how he's able to continue as time goes on here. But I don't, I don't see anything so far that suggests that this is a fluke. You bring up a good point too, that the, uh, major league season is such a different animal from anything that they've played at a minor league level. So a big yeah. part of it is, you know, definitely the, the, the momentum and, and if you can keep it and maintain it consistently throughout the season. Uh, the next question in our chat comes from G uh, Ferreira 481, who asks, when can we expect to see the trade at the deadline or much sooner? See, again, this is an interesting thing for me because this is a change of expectations and, I don't know if we'll see a significant trade, but I wouldn't I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility. I just don't know if the Diamondbacks are buyers or sellers at this point, right? Because I think they're going to yeah. continue to build towards the future. I don't think that they are going to do anything to jeopardize the team that they kind of have right now in place that's been pretty impressive as far as overachieving. But they also don't seem to have too much problems parting ways with certain guys at times, or, you know, we've seen, we've seen guys DFA that I think Jesse and I both didn't really expect to see D- get DFA this, yeah. this early into the season. So yeah. they have definitely been moving on from guys. I, I, I don't see it out of the realm of possibility, but if you're asking me, I still feel like they're playing with house money this season. And I still feel like we won't see them do anything crazy at all either to to make a big trade or do anything just like we didn't see them make a huge splash in free agency to to change this team this season at this point there yeah they're they're not i mean today derek the uh, mlb pipeline updated their top 100 prospects rankings and the diamondbacks are the only team in baseball with three in the top 20 of course that's alec thomas corbin carroll and jordan lawler the three names that we've been talking about for quite some time here. This Diamondbacks team is set to be pretty good. Not that not that far from now. I mean, on paper, it looks like a team that really could contend two or three years from now. And I don't think you really want to jeopardize any of those future pieces in a season where the Diamondbacks 
probably aren't going to contend with the likes of the Dodgers or, you know, the Brewers or whoever comes out of, out of the national league East either. So um, yeah, I, I don't see the diamondbacks making any big moves. Is it possible that they, you know, grab a, a middle reliever or another setup man or something? Um, I think that's possible. I, I wouldn't necessarily expect it, but it all depends on what the diamondbacks record looks like at that point. Uh, if they're still hovering right around 500, if they're, three or four games out of the wild card picture like they are right now, maybe that's enough to, you know, push, push the chips in a little bit. But if they do something like that, it's going to be lower level prospects. It's going to be guys who aren't right. as likely to factor into that picture two or three years from now when things really could swing in a different direction. I was sent today, Jesse, a video of Elijah green running incredibly fast. And all I could, I couldn't help but think that he could yeah, also be, yeah a part of this team. And even if not Elijah green, the diamondbacks have several great options at, at yeah. number two for this the team. good. The good news there is that no matter who I know at one point we joked about, you know, Josh van meters walk off home run the last day of the season last year. And how, of course the diamondbacks are doomed with the second <laughs> overall pick. Now, I don't think that's really much of a concern. I mean, this no, draft is that. really well stocked. Drew Jones, uh, we saw a couple of mock drafts that just came out from Keith Law and Jonathan Mayo. They both had the Diamondbacks taking Drew Jones second. Um, and Drew Jones, by many accounts, is the best rated player in the draft. Um, it sounds like maybe the Orioles want to go a different direction, maybe try Mar to save some money with their is first. Tamar Johnson, potentially? They did not have Tamar Johnson. They actually had Tamar Johnson. At, at least Jonathan Mayo had Tamar Johnson going seventh in the draft so it's amazing it, how there's that stuff changes i feel like it yeah. changes more for baseball than it does for any other sport when it comes to oh, the yeah. top five draft picks it's because nobody has any idea like that's just how the <laughs> that's how the they mlb don't. draft works like they there's don't. a fine line between like the next babe ruth and a guy who's you know gonna tire out in double a and not make it so it, it changes fast because it's way less predictable than other sports are. Jesse, if I could find this fucking article on Shohei Otani and what a what a disaster he was supposedly supposed to be in Major League Baseball, sure. I would tweet it out once a day, every day for the rest of my life because <laughs> it's amazing how wrong people can be about stuff. All right, oh, yeah. the Clutch Canuck in our comments asks, uh, do you expect anything from Drew Ellis before Roas returns? He's under some pressure today after that drop yesterday. I felt like the third base job was his to lose and he lost it so like to be honest i i don't expect anything out of him which honestly sucks I, and and it's that that sucks to say i hope he proves me wrong right but drew ellis has been given a number of opportunities this season and i don't feel like up to any point has he lived up to those opportunities or you know i gotta hate myself for saying this but grabbed the ball and ran with it jesse he hasn't grabbed the ball and run with it at all and i mean the opportunity has been there before josh rojas got back drew ellis could have been the everyday third baseman for this team and and he just wasn't very good at third base yeah it's a it's a great point i mean he had a, a significant window of opportunity there and and the diamondbacks learned pretty early that it, it at least appeared he wasn't ready for that opportunity just yet so yeah, I mean, he's still going to continue to get opportunity. And, and I think you have to be patient knowing that, you know, it's a Dalton Varsho, like a couple hundred major league plate appearances before he really started to look like like what he is now. Um, so you have to be patient. But yeah, the early returns on Jarellis haven't been great. And like you said, hopefully he proves the critics wrong and is able to show what he can do um, in this opportunity as, as we wait for Josh Ross to come back once again. Josh Rojas was very good at third base, by the way. And he was, he was, he, he was. had some really impressive plays already this season. We actually, or at least me, I'm not going to throw Jesse in there because I don't remember his take particularly, but we did say that none of those guys were regular everyday third basemen. And the Diamondbacks were either going to have to like truly platoon those guys out there or, you know, do something about their third base situation. Josh Rojas was doing a more than adequate job, especially by comparison to the other options until he got hurt. So that part yeah. sucks, but hopefully uh, we'll see Josh Rojas back really soon. Uh, I'm just glad that he got to go and play at Wrigley before he got injured again, because that sucks. And I would, if I could, and I know I'm not allowed to, I would send him 
once again, a Costco size package of OG's gummies uh, to make him feel better because everybody feels better on OG's gummies. Uh, stop by your local dispensary and grab some amazing scratch made THC gummies from our friends at OG's. They have an amazing variety of flavors like orange creamsicle, blackberries and cream, watermelon, all sorts of flavors. Uh, they're perfect if you're in the mood for an uplifting sativa after you've hurt your hand or a chill indica after you've hurt your hand. Uh, if you're interested in trying the amazingly delicious varieties of flavors that OG's Brands has to offer, go to ogsbrands.com. That's O-G-E-E-Z brands.com to find OG's near you. And I have no idea about the marijuana testing policy in baseball, Jesse, so I promise I won't get anybody in trouble. But again, OG's Brands, for those of you that don't have a rigorous testing policy uh, at your job. Uh, Jesse, next question comes from our friend and our sister and the person we love, Chris Melton. She says, thoughts on McCarthy this, st this stint? Candy is high praise. Uh, well, Candy didn't even know what XBA was, so I don't really care much at this point. For did Candy his... Did Candy not know what XBA is? Not only did he not know what XBA, he said he had never heard of it, Jesse. He said he had never heard of Wait, it. Wait, in what? Was... I I missed this. What context is this? Did you ask uh, him about it? I it was our friend Chris Gargiola was explaining to him the XBA on a particular uh, hit single home run. I don't know exactly what the, the, the hit was, but he was sure, talking about sure. XBA. And Candy had said he had never heard of. I just, before. I just love how how, I love how you're the one who's like scoffing at people, <laughs> and like infuriated by it. Yeah. How dare you not know about this stat I just learned about twelve days ago? But no, it's whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but yeah, thoughts on thoughts on McCarthy. Jake McCarthy's been outstanding. And I honestly, yeah, he was outstanding last season when the Diamondbacks needed a center fielder out of nowhere when they finally decided to abandon the Cattell Marte in center field experiment. And I think he's again, he's a he's a valuable piece to this team. I just think that the Diamondbacks are are getting to a point where they need to decide who their outfield is now and who it's going to be because this calling guys up thing and doing all this, it just it doesn't provide much consistency or stability for the players themselves. I mean, they're in a, they're in a situation right now where they're trying to figure out who those guys are. I think right. they're, I think they're trying to figure it out. And that's why there's so much movement is that things are changing constantly. And, and of course there's injuries and other things. Um, yeah, still not as bad as the, as the commentators <laughs> on the Apple TV plus podcast. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jake McCarthy has been, he's been really great. And I mean, he went down to Reno after the Diamondbacks sent him down. And I mean, the guy just, just raked. absolutely raked. I mean, yeah. and, and we've talked a lot about Reno numbers and now you have to be careful, but I mean, the man hit like over 400 in his stint in Reno, right. uh, with all sorts of extra base hits and, and everything. So um, he, he has Jake McCarthy is a really good base runner and a, and a solid defender. And, and that's something that the diamondbacks don't have a lot of, as you think about the future of this outfield, obviously Alec Thomas is in there. Corbin Carroll is in there. You know, that those guys, you know, have the full package offense, defense and everything, but there are other guys in that mix that, that you're not necessarily quite as sure about. Uh, someone like Paven Smith, for example, he's not an elite base runner. He's not a great defender. And Jake McCarthy has some tools that, that a guy like that doesn't have. And so the question is, you know, can Jake McCarthy find a way to hit enough in right. order to in order to to garner everyday playing time? And and so far, he looks like he can. So good on him for, you know, putting in the work in Reno and coming back up and showing what he can do. And as much as we hate to say this because he's been excellent in center field, this would allow Dalton Varsho to concentrate more on catching, which really at right now, the Diamondbacks yeah. need him to be more of their everyday catcher rather than be playing right. all over the place. So I'm not opposed to that. Uh, Brute Squad Barbecue wants to know how they can get their hands on some Mantiply Farm Farms brisket. Uh, it is Ginger Hill Angus. That's what you're looking for. The company name ginger hill angus so oh, i don't know there you go. it sounds already like it's going to be very expensive just based on that but uh ginger hill angus is what you're looking for and our last question for mailbag monday is if you could choose any third baseman to play for the d-backs who would it be 
oh man i mean i this is wide open that feels like it could be <laughs> historical it could be now a dangerous uh, question i think that applies to everything and every team everything and every team like every so, time date yeah je- anyone and at, every team in, I think in the this multiverse to everything. it's yes. incredible jesse uh i'll give you first dibs on this uh We'll, we'll, we'll concentrate it more on modern day, but who would you rather have here for a <laughs> third baseman if you could have your your pick of the litter? Do I have to do I have to pick a baseball player? Like, is the scope so? Are wide you gonna pick an X man? Who are you gonna pick? <laughs> I would pick I would pick a baseball player, and I would do two categories. So I would do one current time and one retired. Okay, one all time player, okay. one all time okay. third baseman, and one. All right, Jesse, this is big. Go. Who would you have? Oh man, um, I mean, current time third baseman. There, there's a lot of good third baseman right now in the game. There's only I one would... choice, Jesse, and it's Jose Ramirez. And I want to know why you want Jose Ramirez. That's it. oh, oh, interesting. interesting. <laughs> Jose, 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 Jose Ramirez. Is... Jose Ramirez is the only answer for Christ's sake. He's I... incredible. I think Nolan Arenado, as people in the comments are saying, that was the first name that came to my mind. Yeah. I would probably, yeah. I'd probably go Nolan Arenado if I'm if I'm picking right now from current players. Um, I don't know if we're including if we're including all players from all time third base. Um, oof, that's that's a that's a tough one. It really um, is. It really is. By the way, speaking of Nolan Arenado, uh, going back to 2019. Uh, the highest war since 2019, Nolan Arenado at third base. Also, Paul Goldschmidt. So St. Louis has two of them. Dodgers have three yeah. of them with Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Trey Turner. So none of that's fair. I just wanted to point that out. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I was a huge uh, Chipper Jones fan growing uh, up. I thought that I thought Chipper Jones was fantastic. a legend. And, and the guy... The guy hit like 360 or 370 a few years. It was uh, he was just an incredible hitter. So I would I would go with Chipper Jones. Um, if you're giving me the choice, Jesse, there is only one clear cut case again for third base for all time. Uh, and that person is Wade Boggs. Okay. And the reason <laughs> isn't because Wade Boggs was a great third baseman. It's because Wade Boggs once consumed 107 beers in one day right. while making a cross country flight in the U S uh, <laughs> while playing uh, for the Boston. I believe it was for the Boston Red Sox at the time, but I mean, come on, like, is there any other choice than a person that consumed 107 beers on a single flight? The answer is no. The answer is no. So uh, <laughs> cheers to Wade Boggs. Everybody in the comments got the answer wrong, including you, Jesse. But that's understandable. It's fine. You guys <laughs> didn't factor in the beer factor like I did. And I bet you all feel like fools, but it's fine. I'm okay with it. It's Mailbag Monday, so it's for everybody and not just me. There's no way that 107? Is that what I, you said? I, I, 107 beers. 107 beers. There's an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There's no way. It. I feel like you would get, like, alcohol point yeah like i don't like can you actually survive that like he, not only did he survive but the man played a point. baseball game when he arrived the man played a baseball game when he arrived so anyway uh wade boggs greatest third baseman in the history of the game uh we thank you guys for your questions we thank you guys for being here of course more than anything we thank all of our sponsors and the one that we have to thank the most is our DraftKings sportsbook uh for not only being our sponsor but for giving all new customers uh this amazing deal of betting just five dollars on any nba game during the third round of the nba playoffs and as long as you do and they win you will get 150 dollars in free bets if they do uh, i hate to say it but i am pet i am petty i'm better bet on the uh, golden state warriors to beat the mavericks and you won't be disappointed uh, if you're looking to turn a small bet into a big payday you can also do that by creating your own same game parlay whether you're a new customer or or existing customer uh, do that by adding multiple legs from a game all to one bet the more legs you add the more money you win and right now all customers can place a same game parlay with three or more legs and you will get back a free bet up to 25 dollars if one leg doesn't hit 
Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use our promo code of PHNX and bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game. You will get $150 in free bets if they do. That's promo code PHNX only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 and over only. Arizona only. Gambling problem. Dial 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. The Arizona Diamondbacks are about to beat up on the Kansas City Royals. Hopefully, they should. Uh, it's a team that they definitely can beat. We've talked, looking a bit uh, at their schedule ahead, how they really need to, if they if if they want to be a competitive team this season, they need to jump all over teams in series like this in order to uh, yeah. combat the three-game series that they have coming up at Chase against the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm excited to watch Zach Greinke pitch tonight, Derek. I, <laughs> I, I am too. Oh, I'm going to lose my mind if he throws an EFIS pitch, Jesse. I'm going to lose my mind. And I hope <laughs> I hope it's successful. I hope a Diamondbacks player swings three times at it like they're goofy at the plate and strike out against one EFIS pitch because I love Zach Greinke. He had the most – He like I don't know why. Everybody called him weird, and I constantly found myself – understanding that man more than i understood most baseball players when we were sure. doing interviews and stuff the guy is crazy uh brute squad said i think some young guys are gonna look silly <laughs> against the ephus and you're absolutely right uh alec thomas i hope you watch some film on that pal because i think he alec thomas i don't believe is in the starting lineup tonight so oh, maybe, well. maybe they're they're sparing him the zach ranky yeah that's, that's, that's a smart move that's a smart move he's yeah. gonna embarrass you most likely but uh we thank you guys for joining us we thank you guys for being here on the comments of course we appreciate the questions not only on twitter but here in the comments as well. You can follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. Our show is at PHNX underscore D-backs. But of course, all roads lead to at PHNX underscore sports. That's on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you're watching us right now on YouTube, on the live stream, make sure to sign up over at the PHNX Sports uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe, sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss any of our live shows or the shows from any of the other beats that aren't currently in season by the way we're the king we've talked about this we're king of the phx and mayors and vice mayors and all that for the time being if you're listening to us right now on your favorite audio podcasting app please make sure you subscribe to us there if you haven't done so already and leave us a five-star review we'd love you for it uh on behalf of jesse and myself we appreciate you guys once again for being here we appreciate your time we thank you so much and remember kids baseball is fun but it's so much more fun when you have joe mantiply talk to you about beef Thank you.